All right, welcome back. In case you're just joining us, you are on the breakfast, and it's time for us to take a very hot sip from a very hot cup of tea or coffee <laughs> because it's time for Off the Press. Chris Kendewando, member of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators in the UK, is joining us right now here in Lagos. Hello, Chris. Good morning to you. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Am I right to say you are in Lagos right now? Yes, I'm in Lagos. Okay. Thank you very much. And happy birthday to I wish we could sing, but we can't. <laughs> the, the voices are gone. We used to have voices that could sing, but no, not today. Happy birthday, Chris. Happy birthday to you, Chris. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right. So let's go straight to the Punch newspaper. And it leads with Abuja land. FG may revoke land allocations, demolish 6,000 buildings, slums. Well, the right is there. Illegal buildings must go down, Nikki tells ministers and ambassadors others. Slums in Nyanya, Apo, Idu, 27 hours may be affected. Residents beg minister. And so right in front there you have a picture of the ministers uh, who were sworn in yesterday uh, in Abuja. So let, let's start with this, this statement from uh, Nikki. Chris. Yes, yes. Um, I, in as much as uh, I will ask uh, the deputy minister to calm down a bit, take his time to study the situation. It's just less than four hours on the seat. Uh, he needs to calm down and uh, just take his time, look at the books, uh, and look at whatever uh, hand over notes was given to the previous uh, uh, minister. Then, and to meet with his. Uh, Still, and then from there he can now start working. Uh, still doesn't have, a, you know, um, Abuja is a miniature state. Uh, it almost has the status of a state, so it's not just a ministry. So he um, still have to constitute his uh, what they call the current secretaries in the in F city, uh, which is the equivalent of commissioners to the state. So he will take issue, take his time. I don't think this is time for us to start uh, uh, giving orders. And so, so yes, I will tell you the fact that um, the the Abuja master plan has distorted very, very much. The last two administrations before this really dropped the ball. And I mean, the administration of uh, 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 Jonathan Gulo Jonathan and that of Muhammad Dupar. I was in Abuja about three weeks ago. I was shocked by what I saw. That is not the Abuja. I lived in Abuja for close to about eight years. Uh, during the Obasanjo time. And I, I know what Abuja used to fetch. The Abuja is a complete mess now. Um, I, I, I flew in in the evening, and you can't believe that from the airport or to the uh, Maria Adua way, which is the airport route, to the town, to the city center, you don't have street lights. Very, very like, you, you, we've been to so many countries, of, just even our neighbor here, Accra, go to Accra and see what Accra look like. Or go to Washington or go to other countries, the state capitals, and you see what they are. But the, that of Abuja Master Plan, the, especially the last minister, the man practically did nothing. They 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 call him um, KIV minister. You know what KIV means? Keep in view. That is what he does. They say if I pass to him, just put KIV and just pass it on. He was uh, he used to. Uh, I believe he was one of the worst ministers that ever presided over uh, the FCT. But um, so if there's any distortion to the master plan, building of illegal, illegal buildings and the rest of them, then definitely uh, a decision has to be made so that we can go back to what it used to be. If that is the federal capital territory. That's it. What I'm just saying is that, yes, um, yes, so we can. Yeah, hello, Chris. Yeah, well, yes, New Song Weekend hit the ground running as New Song Weekend. <laughs> <laughs> That's who it is. Okay, yeah, Chris, that we, we kind of lost you a bit there. Um, That's the audio. Um, I was just saying to Nyambo that New Song Weekend hit the ground running as New Song Weekend. I wasn't expecting anything different from him. He didn't disappoint. He <laughs> <laughs> yeah, didn't disappoint. Uh, and he has started the. Uh, you saw what he said yesterday. He said some people are dancing ringing, mm -hmm. and he was referring to the PDP, some PDP, 
he said that uh, the president wrote to all the 36 governors to nominate uh, candidates uh, as ministers and the audit, and that uh, he got the permission of the national chairman of EDP and other, all other stakeholders to come. So he has better, what I'm saying in essence, Abuja no be rivers. It's a different ball game. So let him take his time to, to, to see what, what is on ground, then take decisions that we, whatever decision it takes, is going to affect all Nigerians, uh, unlike river states, where it only affected the people of rivers. That's what I'm saying. But if there's any distortion, you can be rest assured that we can with labor. But for him also to deliver, he must get the backing of the president. If he doesn't have the backing of the president, I can tell you that's nothing he can do. Because most of the people that he's talking about are very powerful. You have even among them ministers, you have um, generals, you have all sorts of politicians and the rest of them as governors who have encroached on land in Abuja. So, except the president, Tinubu gives him the kind of power that Obasanjo gave Erufai to be able to do what he wants. You know that um, Obasanjo gave Erufai an uh, unfettered power to do whatever he did. And that was what the, why Erufai was able to achieve. So, the ability for Wiki to achieve whatever he wants depends on also the power given to him or granted him and the backing given him yeah, by but the you president. See, I, I agree with you, but for President Bola Tinubu to put Enwike there, I would like to think he knows why he did that. Because Mike, everybody knows Mike for who he is. He's rugged and he, he, he as I said, he, he hit the ground running as Mike. Uh, he, there have been divergent views on how he has started something. He should calm down, just as you have said. Uh, read the books. What's, what's, what's in the records? Find out what and what is there and, and what he should um, address and how he should address it because of course uh, Abuja is not just about um, the roads the structures you have health you have water you have other things to consider but then that is Mickey and that's who he is um, Nyang, we want, we want to contribute to no, that. Well, well, it's wiki you're saying. I'm, I'm not sure there's a contribution <laughs> to that. But like, like uh, uh, Chris said, um, he has to have the buy-in of mm -hmm. the people that make Abuja thick. Because whether we like it or not, um, Abuja is a potpourri of, of cultures, of peoples, uh, so many things in Abuja that if you say Abuja no be not be reverse, mm -hmm. it will also be a very critical factor. And if we can, because he just talks like a, an, uh, like a dictator, <laughs> if he takes that to Abuja, it may not work. Yeah. So, but I don't know, like you say, like um, we know, um, if a small child, like my people say, if a small child comes in the morning to challenge someone who is bigger, there must be an elder this hiding somewhere. You know? <laughs> so, All right, so let, let's read some of the other headlines here before we move to the next newspaper. You have right on the masthead, FG may raise $17 billion from oil asset sale. You have, uh, that's from JP Morgan. You have government to revive Ajakuta Steel, Umahi plans road inspection. You have bought chairman MDs by additional 145 billion Naira bank shares. And underneath you have, I want to reunite with Boko Haram husband. Uh, Ondo teenager confesses taking part in over 40 robberies and Navy arrests 10 oil thieves with over 100 jerry cans. Chris, you want to talk about this uh, story on the cheaper girl? that was rescued, who wants to reunite with her Boko Haram husband? Well, it's quite unfortunate, but uh, we know how want to understand the human relationship. Uh, love, whether forcefully or unforcefully. Uh, once a man goes into a relationship with a woman, irrespective of what, whoever he is, along the line they have to bond, they will get to bond. And that's, I think that's what has happened in this case. Don't forget that most of these girls were just young girls that were in secondary school that knew, never knew men, um, virgins and the rest of them before they were um, packed away uh, by Boko Haram. And at the end of it, so you come to realize that those probably were the first set of men that I ever met. And in the course of um, their relationship, they've had children for them, they've lived together, and there's a tendency for them to want. So if, we, if some of them say that they, they miss their husband, it's not out of place because they're not just their husband, they're also the father of their children. So mm -hmm. I was not surprised uh, when um, 
the AP said that there's a particular one that said that she has two girls for one of the commanders to think that one died. Uh, that is not the first time. Those that were rescued or those that came out in the past also said, some of them said they want to go back. But that is the situation, that is the sad situation we find ourselves. And um, it is what it is. Uh, but the fact is that I still, I still believe that we dropped the ball on this issue. So many of these two girls who have been rescued and uh, who have been allowed to come back, we know that as many as close to about, if not about 70 or 80 or close to 100, are still with the Boko Haram terrorists. And some of them, we are married a way to even neighboring the terrorists in other countries that may not be seen yet. So um, that is the situation as it were on that. So um, I, I'm not shocked, and nobody should be surprised. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you're a mother. Of and course. You know, uh, you know the bond between mothers and their children. Mm -hmm. So it is irrespective of whatever. That, that aspect of it is, uh, is something that one cannot be detached. And, Indeed. But it's good that to see that they were not killed. The most important thing is that it is good to know that they were not killed. Because the belief is that probably most of them some have been killed and rest of them. I know some of them would have also died because uh, of where they are. But the fact is that we are seeing some of them coming back or being rescued means that most of them are still alive, only that they are in the custody of these terrorists. You know, something you said, Chris, very instructive, very strong, is that we dropped the ball on this case. These children should have all been Indeed. rescued many years ago when this incident happened. Mm -hmm. They shouldn't have been left mm -hmm. in the hands of these bandits. And I understand that this, mm -hmm. this husband that she's talking about has also been caught, uh, but, you know, they were separated because he had to be handed over to the unit in charge of, um, you know, profiling those uh, bandits uh, that uh, are captured. So, um, she yeah, she said that she said that the, the husband is a repentant Boko uh, Haram uh, leader. So he's repentant. So the leader is no longer facing in, in the course of Boko Haram. Um, so uh, uh, let them do their profiling, and if they find out that he's repentant, of course, there are so many hundreds and hundreds of those of them that came out in the past that. Uh, that have been given amnesty by the government. So this one will not be an exception. And what do you think, now that you've mentioned that word amnesty, what do you think of the amnesty given to this repentant Boko Haram people? Well, it's like going back to the, going back to, since most of us condemned it uh, when it happened uh, in the past, and we felt that that is not the best way to go. Uh, it has pointed or whatever anybody says. If you have found to have killed people, um, willingly, then the law should take its course. The issue, and they were comparing it with the Niger Delta militants, and you say it's not the same. It's not the same. Niger Delta militants were fighting for a cause. They were not killing people. They were only busting the pop, uh, pipelines, and for a reason. And once that issue was addressed, there was nothing like that again. But what reason with this one? If what was their problem? What was their agitation? Where were they killing people? They were not only killing innocent people. They were kidnapping them. They were raping them. They were killing soldiers in their hundreds. Mm. So at the end of it, or when you see somebody that killed your family or killed your father and everything, after some time, God, government says they're giving you amnesty. What happens? Mm -hmm. And that to me is not was not good enough. But in the reason of the, the, the government, that is what they decided to do. And we cannot question that. Personally, I felt there's no need for those kind of amnesty. In as much as, uh, yes, we are just saying, oh, they repented. But they're supposed to have served certain J10, at least certain J10, uh, J10 to, as a deterrent. Because, because they we are also instances. Mm -hmm. There were some instances, a man or that. Some of them were uh, forgiving and the rest of them. And after some time, they went back. They went back to join Boko Haram again. And they continued from where they stopped. So, but uh, that is in the past. I don't know how this government is going to handle it. So, but that was what the Buhari government was needed for. And that was why the insurgents, uh, insurgency at the point was also on the rise because people were not being um, rated, given the necessary punishment that they deserve. We just uh, they bring them out and they say they've reformed them, they'll give them SIM card, give them money and ask them to go, only for them to go back. And there was a particular one that was arrested. And at the point he came back, when he came out, he, he, he referred to going back to kiss certain people before going back to the bush. So um, this is not this is this is not about uh, Christianity or where uh, you say, Oh, uh, God has forgiven you, Jesus has forgiven. No. There was a statement by Putin, by Vladimir Putin. I'm sure you must have seen that statement. What that is what is talking about terrorists. It is he saying yes, our duty is for you to, for us to say it. our duty is not for God to forgive. We send you to where God will either forgive you 
or let you go. <laughs> but we are going to do what we need to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, but I'm, I'm sorry, but I've read that. Yes, story, yes, I've, I've seen that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Only to send you to God. You know, God will. Yes, we we'll send you to God. So it is not left for God to forgive you or let you go. <laughs> it is His duty to send you to Him. So that. Is, <laughs> so. Okay. Well, uh, we've seen that is a Stockholm syndrome where people want to get married to their captors. They want they fall in love with the people who kidnap them and all that. We've seen it not only in Nigeria; it happens everywhere. It's human nature. But mm -hmm. right now, a worrisome thing in the Nation newspaper. Uh, a small headline there, up top left, is that Nigeria's uh, net foreign reserves is at 3.7 billion dollars that is according to jp morgan what do you make of this well we have a congratulation i would like to start the fact remains that no matter whatever we have in our in, the, in that reserve in as much as it doesn't touch the pocket of an average Nigerian, it doesn't put the life of average Nigerian. it's nothing to me yes that is good for us to say for the reading but the fact remains that we need to leave to be able to enjoy the benefits of the rainy day. And that is the situation as it were. Presently, Nigerians are facing serious problem, uh, food crisis. Um, I had a new minister of Nigerian Affairs, uh, Betty, to saying that um, uh, agenda is pulled 133 million Nigerians, a million Nigerians out of poverty. And I say, wow, madam, calm down. Mm -hmm. Calm down. We've had this before. We had all the promises made and the rest of them. So why don't you just take your time? Most of these ministers, uh, they are just making no chances without even thinking through what they are saying. Because at the end of it, all, you come to realize that what you know, what when you prepare to go to the market in the morning, there are, you have certain things in your mind. But by the time you get to the market, you don't want to find that the prices may change and the rest of them. So you have to take your time. So let them not just be making no chances. Some of these, those are part of those chances that. I remember in those, uh, I think in the last administration, where some uh, service chiefs were appointed, and one was give, given an order and saying that we, uh, we promised Nigeria that within, was, this is within one month that he was going to wipe away Boko Haram. And within weeks, they attacked and attacked and killed so many soldiers. So, and I, think, I, I believe it let less, less, them take that time. As for the results, I, I, I don't know how the, the president said within one month that they saved one trillion. Naira from the removal of subsidy, and that uh, the effect is going to trickle down. The president made a broadcast talking about the palliatives. Till now, Nigerians have not felt how many how many weeks it is now. Nigerians have not felt the effect, the effect of that palliative. Prices of food is rising. Petroleum is out of the reach of people, um, and so many other things. So I think that what we just need, I I got this branding of a. Uh, Practicing of figures, so we made this, this one and that. The fact is that how is it affecting the lives of Nigerians? Is that going to reduce the price of bread? Is it going to reduce the price of rice? Is it going to reduce the price of beans? Or is it going to reduce the prices of chicken and the rest of them? The staple foods. Most Nigerians cannot go to bed feeding now. Most of them go to bed hungry. Uh, before it could be one zero one, now it is even at times zero zero zero. So people don't go to bed with, with and that is the problem. So that is what I want to hear. I will see the um, Minister of Agriculture coming out and say, this is the roadmap. In the next few months, this is what we intend to achieve, to bring down the right, uh, prices of rice. Mm -hmm. This is what we're going to do to bring down the prices of rice. Then in petroleum, oh, we're not going to have increase. That's why the fact that I say that the market forces is good. What are we going to do about the refineries? Are we going to uh, privatize them? Are we going to sell them off? So are we going to, when are we going to start refining? The president has promised us that by December that the protocol refinery will come back on stream. We need to see tangible solutions to some of this problem, but not just the brand missing because that we have been hearing since 2015. I'm not carried away by that. Yeah, well, um, it's, <laughs> we have, you, have, you have just touched it. Um, the other headline there, still in the Nation newspaper, is how we will implement Tinubu's agenda. And we've seen uh, the riders there uh, when cabinet members lay out priority areas and president demands performance and urges uh, restoration of faith in government. From Wiki pulling down buildings uh, to better I do uh, bringing uh, 130 million people out of poverty to the Minister of Information saying they will not tell lies to defend the government and so many other very, very laudable statements. Uh, how much do you believe, how much faith do you have 
in all these statements that they are making. You have touched on it, but uh, let's just talk a little bit more for emphasis sake. You know that in local palace, there was a call in the Shagra. Mm. You know in the Shagra. <laughs> mm, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so what we are saying is initial drag. When the Jews are down, you come to see who can and what they can do. But I want to give them, uh, uh, sincerely, mm. I, I have an open heart and I want to give them the benefit of, benefit of the doubt. I want to be a, an optimist as a Nigerian. I want to believe that they have what it takes to be able to get out of, out of where we are. I want to also believe that most of the things that they are saying, they are going to do it. But when I answered the promises that were made to Nigerians in 2015 and 2019 and how I found that, then my heart sinks as a Nigerian. I, I, I don't tend to be a, a, a total optimist again. I become a pessimist. So, um, about that, we will not lie to Nigerians. If that's the new way, fine. Um, the Minister of uh, Information is a publisher, uh, is a publisher of uh, Blueprint newspaper, and is a Tory journalist. And I, I hope he will be able to. It's just one thing for him to wish, and it's another thing for the government to have the. If he wishes to tell Nigerians the truth, as it were, and those his orders don't want Nigerians to hear the truth, there's nothing he can do about it. So he goes to the truth. No, he can resign. He can resign. It's uh, not in our character how, to how, resign. How, how, many, <laughs> how many don't, how yeah. many don't resign? Before? But, but there is something he can do. He will just choose not to Listen, do it. One thing we've seen is that even those who critique government, once they get into that corridor of power, once they join the other side, they become thank government you. apologists. Thank, thank you, my sister. You know the saying they used to say now? They say when you are at the table that with the food you don't talk. That is the, that is the situation with the um, table uh, manners. Officials. Yes, I give my brother that you can resign. Mm. There's nothing wrong with resigning. But I want to ask you, since 1999, <laughs> just name one that is mine. Just one. <laughs> Not in our character. <laughs> they they just will not do it, but but that is something they can do. But what you see, the my my worry is even yesterday was the day that they were sworn in. Some of them got to know their ministries that yesterday because there was a reshufflement even before they started. So I'm sure these people will study the ministries they have been given before they can come out with a blueprint. Because I've always said this, we've always said this, that why not just tell these people what you are likely to be if you pass the, the screening of the Senate, so that all that time you will use it to kind of formulate the kind of policy or have a roadmap that, uh, that will guide you in whatever you're going to do. But they don't know. They never know. Yes. So, so now they will need maybe, maybe like three maybe months. Maybe we are the ones that never know. They will need three months or at Chris, least. Chris, what do you think? Maybe we are the ones that do not know. No, they, 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 they still don't know. Because <laughs> if they know, even the president, for the first time since 1999, hmm. you see a president has issued that, that has um, given um, uh, assigned portfolios to ministers. And just for the, the 24 hours before they were, they were sworn, hmm. they started speaking, speaking that, that's where we spoke. They don't know. They don't know. They don't know. The fact remains that. But we will continue to say that. Yes, that is way too. I totally agree with you that they should. We should look at it because that will uh, 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 that will also assist the Senate in screening to them. ask the right yes, questions. Yes. yes. To ask the right questions, like the guy that is in the, the guy that is talking about the lady that is talking about uh, lifting one thirteen million Nigerians. The Senate would have asked him, "How, How? are you going exactly. to do that?" Mm. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Mm -hmm. And that is it. The guy that is in across, at the crowd, how are we going to do that? The Minister of um, Education, who was the former Vice Chancellor of Base University, Base University, where the uh, that is owned by the Vice Presidential Candidate of the Labour Party. Party. You know that Base is owned by yeah. so that yes, yes. The, the deputy, that man, the current Minister of Education, is the Vice Chancellor of that university. The question we have asked him is that: How are you going to settle? The issue of ASU federal government, so that we don't have. This. So there is a lot of questions that we ask, but nobody we lost the opportunity. The only time that we will ask them questions now is when they summon them, when they are coming to de uh, defend their budget, and even when they are coming to defend their budget, some of them don't even want to come. They will be forced to come. Or some we have to, you know, pass on the Ghana must go under the table and the rest of them so that they can have smooth. Speech. So we lost the opportunity also. But I hope my own is that I hope that the president has given them a marking scheme. Because that is what we don't do. If you are going to, if you sit for school sats, the, as a lecturer, uh, the person that is going to buy going to be given a marking scheme. These are the key areas you have to consider. These are the things that, these are the indices. And these are the lists you can fall short of. And when you fall short of that, you'll be sacked. 
So there will be periodic and unlike what Buhari did. They were there for four years. So many of them were there for four years and eight years and they did practically nothing and they didn't do anything about it. So you must have a benchmark for each minister that if you fall short of this, then you have to go. And that is why I always say that the box stops on the table of the press. The ability to perform and not be able to perform will also depend on their head, which is the president. If he's going to make sure that they, they deliver on what he has asked them to do, they all will have to go. But if he's going to be the sit -down president, I will just sit down, go and have a few days that I will just tell you that we are back to square one. Chris, I totally agree with you. At least after one year. They should be able to assess them and say, okay, do, do you know where you're going with this ministry we've given you, you know, and either sack them or retain them, right? And then I want to ask you, Chris, does the parliament not have the right, or does it, uh, to ask the executive to make sure they attach portfolios before sending their ministerial lists so that they can thoroughly do their job, their oversight function of grilling these people and screening them thoroughly to know if they are fit for the portfolios that, you know, they are supposed to be assigned to. Well, Maureen, this is the same parliament that tells some of them to take their bow and go. <laughs> so, so what yes, let, me, let me, let me yeah. answer that with, you know, in law, that's, in law, that's what we call fit for purpose. Yeah. It's very straight. When you say something is fit for purpose, that means it's fit for that, but that is, a, mm. a, 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 that is not for you. But I totally agree with you, but it also comes back to, it is not just making a pronouncement. We are going to must have an amendment to the constitution mm. that it must be specific. So it, it's not just what the parliament will just say. Just like we said that, you know that there's an amendment to the constitution saying before, like before, that giving the president a timeline on when to present his ministers. Yeah. His 60 days. 60 days. It wasn't like that before. The same thing with um, the, the, the governors. So we, what we now say now, when it's the same parliament that can amend that and say, henceforth, when you are bringing mm -hmm. the list of Ministers designate, attach the portfolio. Then it becomes it becomes law, and the president cannot do anything about it. But at that, but if the parliament do not, are not able to do that, then there's nothing the president. The president can just be doing what he likes, and that just it is at his discretion. He can, he may or may not be able to. We cannot hold him to it. Okay, well, we should move to the next. Uh, All right, we'll move to the next paper. newspaper, which is the leadership. All right, the leadership naturally it's leading with the uh the tinubu uh, and the minister's story um tinubu uh, to ministers go to work nigerians will tolerate failure but we're not going to go to that we've talked about that already so um adamawa rec petitions nba over planned disciplinary action that's another headline there that i think is interesting chris wh what do we know about this well, the, for that, the Niger, Nigerian Bar Association uh, had a, instituted an investigation into three members of the association. One is Professor, the uh, University of Calabar professor that was accused of uh, sexual harassment. Um, two is a baddest, baddest lawyer, the, the lawyer, the female lawyer that strips on social media. Then third is the Adama suspended Adamawa uh, rec. Uh, over behaviors that uh, they said that uh, brings to the, uh, brings the, the 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 association or the profession to uh, to repeat. So that is just so investigation is ongoing. And um, the two of them are lawyers, and that is why the MBA is stepping in. So I think uh, they are instituting a, 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 an investigation into the activities of that um, um, suspended wreck in Adama, knowing fully well what he did. I went to announce the name of somebody that didn't win an election. And was trying to damn the consequences, and that, I think that so he's just trying to, I believe he's just trying to hide behind behind it, his fingers. But it is for the NBA to do their job. After the investigation, they come come out with their report. If they find him guilty, probably they might suspend him. Today, is the, this is not the first time that a lawyer is suspended. In fact, some people have some lawyers have been stripped of their essay, and I'm sure you know of that in Nigeria, we have some lawyers that are stripped of their senior advocate of Nigeria. So the that of the. There's ongoing debate whether what the girl, the one that stripped, you must have been saying that stripped and, and, and tried to smoke it good. Yeah. And uh, on social media, she's called baddest lawyer, Ifunaya. <laughs> her own is still being integrated. Nigerians are divided over that. Whether she does outside her profession is the business of anybody. Yes, we see. Then the dean of faculty of law, investor of Calabar, that has been accused of sexual harassment, mm -hmm. is on suspension and uh, he's been suspended. The NBA is also looking at So those are the three. 
three angles they are looking to handle. Let's wait and see what they get. Yeah, I, I wish that they could also handle the issue where someone's husband was influencing some uh, some uh, judgments and nobody seems to be talking about that anymore. You remember? Yeah. Uh, yes. So they are talking about that. They, they, that's, they are talking about the former uh, 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 mm -hmm. court of appeal. Yes, the president of court of appeal. And people from us. I'm sure that I don't know. The woman has retired. Uh, I don't know what that done about her. But if she's in service, then definitely probably. There will be some kind of but they, they, they can also investigate that. Yeah, but I, I, I understand the husband has gone to court to get an injunction to stop the ICPC. Normal, from normal injunctions all the time. I, I don't know. That one, that's how we roll. Now you tell me, Sabi. But why? Why do you guys do this? You, you, you people in the in the law profession should you be granting injunctions? Eh? No, 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 no. People, people in the law profession, because I wouldn't give an injunction to someone who has been accused of something. If you have the evidence, you are sure that you didn't do that, prove it and just let's get over with it. But you go and get you an injunction, you, perpetual you, injunction. Do you remember the Peter Didi case? Of course. I'm of sure course. you remember Peter yes. Of course, yes. yes. If I, that was yes. when I got to know what perpetual injunction perpetual was. Perpetual injunction. <laughs> I beg, I beg, we'll go to the next story. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's so go. On the man's head, okay. we have Taraba Task Force arrest 3,500 illegal miners. I find this interesting because, I mean, we know different states in this country where illegal mining takes place. Different states in this country. You have illegal miners who come here and cut away our treasures. And the question I ask is, where are the state governors? when these things happen. And well, I, 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 that's why I find interesting what uh, Dele Alake has said, that he's going to ensure that our wealth being filtered away through this, because we've depended so much on oil, we've not paid attention, enough attention to the non-oil sector where we can actually get revenue from. So Chris, talk to us about this, uh, this headline. Yeah, I, I just totally agree with you. You took the words off my mouth. And that is where the Minister of uh, uh, solid minerals, the data like it has is well cut out. Mm -hmm. uh, in the, the, that is a sector that is totally neglected. I, I equate it with that of gas. You know, those are the two sectors that where we can make so much money. If you look at our gas deposits, if we're able to harness it properly, we'll make more money from gas than even this oil we are, mm -hmm. we are just wasting up discussing. Because our gas is one of the finest in the world and it's most sought after. This is why you see that LNG is doing so well, making so much money. So if we're able to harness that area of gas, then we are good to go. There are so many countries in Europe that need gas. And with the situation with the war in, in Russia, between Russia and Ukraine, most of them are being starved of gas because most of the gas they use is coming from Russia. And because of the strained relationship between them and Russia, they haven't said it. So if we can be able to harness that gas, especially this one, we are even flaring. Most of those things you see us flaring in the south. My brother is from the south side. You, 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 even men are from the south side. So you see those guys that you are flaring your area. Wasting. <laughs> Namoni. Namoni now. Namoni. We just Namoni. 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 Chris is bringing And the annoying thing, Chris, is this. Over the years, as a broadcast journalist, we've discussed these issues on air. And experts, energy experts, have cried against this flaring, flaring of gas. gas. But governments come and go. Nothing changes. Why? Yes, because we don't want to do this right thing. Do you know that there is a law against flaring of gas in Nigeria? Are you aware of that? There is. Tell that us is about one. it. Yes, mm -hmm. there is. Even, this, uh, 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 even the, uh, the PIB that just uh, be signed into law, there is also sessions concerning the issue of flaring of gas. The fact remains that most of those companies find it much easier to flare the gas than combating them. And when they flare them, they just pay very, very, they just pay peanuts. In most countries, you can't do that. You can't just do that. And those are the kind of things they don't do. That is what Sheikh cannot do in the, in the country where they come from. That's what Mobi cannot do. That is what most of these other um, oil, oil companies cannot do. So, on to have the will. And that is why now we have a minister specifically for gas. Mm, let us see what he's going to do. Mm, let's see. Do you understand? Yes. For the first time. Yes. Yes. Let us see what he's going to do. So, if he's going to be really he stay there and sit there playing gas and not say anything about it, then he can be held responsible. You know, before it was lopsided. The gas and the petrol was lost. So we find it difficult. You have the onshore, the offshore, and the rest of them. But now we have. So 
which is why I, I give kudos to this government. At least they are thinking they are taking out of the post. Mm -hmm. But back to the issue of mining, before we can do much about mining, then we also have to think about the constitution because the right, forget whatever is happening in the state, the exclusive right to these issues and to mining, it is an exclusive right. It is, a, it is the exclusive beast. Only the federal government can give license for that. Even the states don't have the power. So, most often than not, that is why you are saying illegal. Because most of the things going on in the states are illegal. Mm -hmm. But we believe that it can be decentralized. And where the state and the uh, uh, federal government can have equal rights to go into that, license people, monitor the way it is done, and do you know what is it? You, used to, you need to go to just and see what is happening. Oh, you need to go to Tarab. People in Oshu in Oshu State, you need to go and see what is happening there. It's so terrible. Yes. Okay. I uh, grew up in Plateau State. I know what you're talking about in regards to money. Now, uh, let's look at another thing, but quickly now because our, our time is up. Um, we go to um, Kaduna, rather. Governor Sani slashes fees in Kaduna tertiary schools. We hear that this is as a result of the palliatives that have been given. He has decided to make sure that uh, tertiary institutions uh, pay less. People in the tertiary institutions pay less. Uh, so that's part of the palliatives. So it brings us to the issue of the palliatives. Five billion to every state that will be given. And we've heard that 48% will have to be returned to the federal government. What do you think about the um, preparedness of states to even use this five billion as palliatives that will be beneficial to the people? Very fast now, so that we wrap up, Chris. My sincere opinion, I believe that that's money being wasted. And that is my personal opinion. Five billion to states. Then you give a state that has uh, seven local government five billion and give a state that has uh, 54 local government five billion. I mean, what will be that baby to do? They are also putting it in the hands of governors who are going to distribute it amongst their supporters. So it doesn't make any difference to me. So personally, I felt that that would have been challenged into something. And also remember that if, if, if this money had been disposed in most of the states, they didn't say anything about it. They kept quiet until the federal government came out with the circular and the announcement that they had been sent to. So if they have this, the federal government hasn't come out with that, then they would have just gone to sleep and shared it among themselves the way they did. So, for me, um, the palliatives, after promises, and the rest of them, we still we are not yet feeling this thing. It's because the government is not doing what it's supposed to be. There's policy some sort. Don't forget where they started from. We're going to give them 10,000 naira. I say, whatever, how, how much is this they are going to give to how many millions of people? Yeah. They change their mind. The state go and get it registered. After that, they change their mind again. I say, okay, we're giving this to At the end of it, too, 180 billion was disposed to the state and, um, um, to the Go and ask yourself, have you seen anybody getting anything out of that money? I've not heard. Probably they've not started the deposement and rest of that. But there can be more holistic. I still believe that the best way to go about this is making sure that our refineries are working. If our refineries are working, then the prices of petroleum will come down. Then prices of goods, which is tied to petroleum, will also come down. Except we do that, all this thing we are just doing is just trying to scratch the surface. And refuse to treat the tree, which refuse to treat the wound. We just adding plaster and just dropping uh, whatever ori on the on the saw. It will not heal. That's my personal opinion. Okay, thank, thank you, you so, so much, much. Chris. Yeah. Always a pleasure to have you on of the press and happy birthday again. Wishing mm -hmm. you the very best of the day and the rest of the year. Yeah. Very much. I really appreciate it. Have a wonderful day. You, you too. too. Chris Gendewandu, member of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators in the UK, has joined us on Up the Press as he always does on, a, on Tuesdays on The Breakfast. Stay with us. We'll be back with the first hot topic. You don't want to go nowhere because Sarah will be joining us.